Committee of Adjustment is a body appointed by City Council to hear applications for relief from the city's zoning bylaws and also to hear applications to sever property within the city in accordance with the provisions of the Planning Act. Procedure followed by this committee is that we will first hear from the applicant. We will then invite those who wish to ask any questions or voice their objections to the application to come forward. The committee will consider all the information presented and will then render its decision. If you wish to be notified of the decision of the Committee of Adjustment in respect to this application, you must submit a written up request before the Committee of Adjustment makes a decision. Requests are to be made to the Secretary Treasurer, Mr. Jeff Bannon, in the Building and Planning Department, J. Bannon at Stratford.ca. This will also entitle you to be advised of a possible local planning appeal tribunal hearing. Even if you are the successful party, you should request a copy of the decision since the Committee of Adjustment decision may be appealed to the Local Planning Appeal Tribunal by the applicant or another member of the public. Any decision reached by this committee is not final and binding until after the appeal period has expired. If you wish to appeal the committee's decision to the Local Planning Appeal Tribunal, you may do so within that appeal period. By completing the request of decision form from Mr. Jeff Bannon at jbannon at stratford.ca, Persons other than the applicant or his or her agent who wish copies of the decision will have decisions sent to you. Do any members have a declaration of pecuniary interest with any application? I need to declare a conflict of interest with application number A19-20. Okay, thank you, so noted. With that, we will hear our first Application, uh, Ms. Baker, do you wanna go ahead, please? Uh, yes, thank you, if you can hear me. Good afternoon to the chair and the committee. Uh, the first application is A19-20. Uh, the owner is Janine McIntyre and their agents are Kenny and Robertson Law Offices. Uh, this application uh, will be familiar. It was on the previous committee of adjustment uh, calendar in October uh, to sever essentially two lots that were inadvertently merged. And one of the conditions of the consent uh, was obtaining a minor variance for 440 Ontario Street. Uh, the lot once severed won't meet the minimum lot frontage requirement of 12 meters. Uh, so essentially this is to fulfill that uh, consent condition. Uh, we have not received uh, any comments from members of the public and staff are recommending approval of the application as it's essentially a reestablishing of former lot line uh, that has existed for over a hundred years. Okay, is there anyone that wishes to speak to this application? Hearing none, any questions from committee members, Jerry or David? Not me. But the only thing Kevin that I, I just, wanted to uh, ask is on page five of the agency comments, the only thing that stood out there was there was, uh, when we were talking about this last meeting was um, about the separate sanitary had, there was, I, if memory serves me, somebody was supposed to get back and, and, and let us know what, if that had been taken care of, or if there was, it was all on one, Did, or am I out in left field here? Someone want to speak to that? It's, I can. Uh, uh, yes, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Through the chair, uh, there was a condition on the consent application uh, because there is essentially one sanitary service from Ontario Street to both houses. There was a con consent condition that required a new sanitary service so that there would be two, one for each house. Uh, it was committee's decision to remove uh, that condition uh, and not have it be a requirement okay. of the severance. I just needed my memory jog there. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else who wishes to speak to this application? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. I'd be happy to move the recommendation, Mr. Chairman. Okay, is there um, a seconder? Jerry, seconding. Any further discussion? Any opposed? Hearing none, that is passed. Thank you. Ms. Baker, next uh, application. 
The next application is a minor variance application, file number A20-20 uh, for Rebecca and Jason o Gracie, applied for on behalf of uh, NA Geomatics. This is a variance application to permit the conversion of an existing single detached dwelling uh, to permit uh, two units. Under the current zoning bylaw, it is considered a duplex and follows the regulations for duplexes. In that regard, they're requesting a reduction in the mini minimum lot frontage from 14 meters uh, to 12.04 meters to recognize the existing uh, lot frontage. Uh, we did see receive one comment from the public, uh, the owners at 348 Albert Street. They had uh, two concerns, uh, one being uh, the provision of parking, and the second was just uh, would this impact the long-term upkeep uh, of the property. The staff are recommending approval uh, of the application in that it meets the four tests for variance, uh, providing additional housing within the built boundary. And it is noted under the draft uh, zoning bylaw that's not yet approved. Uh, the conversion of a single detached dwelling into a duplex would be permitted uh, in terms of uh, frontage and property size. Uh, one item to note that was identified in the staff report, uh, it was discovered through the review of the application that an additional variance uh, is required for one of the two parking spaces, being the existing parking space on the western property line is currently 2.9 meters. The zoning bylaw requires where a parking space abuts a property line it shall have a minimum width of 3.0 meters. Uh, this parking space has been in existence uh, for some time and under the draft zoning bylaw, it would be considered a legal parking space. It would meet the minimum requirement at 2.4 meters. Unfortunately, however, under the existing bylaw, they would need to add an additional variance. And while it is considered minor in nature, uh, it's the recommendation um, of the city planning department that notice will be required uh, to be given to adjacent property owners to add uh, this additional variance. And this has been communicated with the applicant's agent. Okay, is there someone to speak to this application? Good afternoon, it's David Raithby. Can you hear me? Yes, go right ahead, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, we spoke uh, uh, regarding this uh, application, re the uh, uh, the parking that sort of dropped uh, uh, late in the game uh, to us here. There are currently two existing parking spaces on the property. Uh, they've been in use for a long time. There's really no issues there. Uh, the existing width at the front, uh, uh, 2.9 meters, is uh, just uh, inches short of the uh, of the uh, three meters that's uh, required. Uh, so I, I would hope that this could move forward in that regard because it is very minor, uh, very technical in nature. Um, I, I respect the uh, uh, comments of the public. Uh, uh, from what I understand uh, in this uh, situation, there is uh, nothing gonna be done to the exterior other than uh, you know clean up and making it uh, uh, nicer on the outside. The two, uh, Parking uh, the spots that are in use now will continue to be in use. And realistically, there's gonna be nothing changing on the exterior of the property. Uh, the use uh, is, a, is a change on the internal side and it's uh, going from, a, uh, from the single family residential to a converted uh, dwelling with the extra unit attached. So it's relatively straightforward in my mind, but uh, uh, I'd be happy to entertain questions if uh, anybody has them. Okay, members of the committee, questions? Yes, I have a couple. Mm -hmm. So would I be correct in thinking that we couldn't include the park? There you go ahead. Um, we couldn't include the parking in, in the decision or in the, the application before us because there's a notice requirement that must be done first. Is that what I understood? Through the chair, that is correct. Uh, the variance required for the uh, parking space being 2.9 meters versus three was not included uh, in the application. And so um, notice would be required um, given that we have had one letter of uh, 
I wouldn't say objection, but there was some concerns brought forward from a neighboring property owner. Okay. So then that, that second variance will entail extra cost for an application, won't it? Through the chair, yes, there is a recirculation uh, in order to right. cover the cost of notice. If tonight's decision was delayed to incorporate that overlooked parking variance, so it, the two were blended into one application, would that save the applicant money? Or is it too late in the process to be to entertain that? Uh, through the chair, it's not too late. Um, the deferral fee, which I believe is around $600, would be the same fee uh, regardless because they'd essentially either be amending the existing mm -hmm. application um, to add that new variance or requiring the fee to essentially give notice again with the additional variance required. Oh. I'm trying folks, but I'm not gonna, we're not gonna be able to help you on this one. Sorry, okay, that ends my questions. <laughs> it's a good idea. <laughs> Any other questions from committee members? Was that just an oversight or is that just, uh, it was like just figured upon after the fact of the initial application? Uh, uh, oh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say through the chair, uh, it was not included in the original application. Um, and we had had some follow up discussions with the applicant to uh, essentially ensure that all the regulations uh, were picked up. Um, this one wasn't included in the submission. And with the notice coming so fast after uh, submission, uh, we didn't have time to add it uh, into the notice. Okay, thank you. I have a question. You referred to the fact that once the new zoning bylaw comes in, then this will actually meet the criteria in that new bylaw? That is correct. Under the new draft bylaw, uh, there's proposed regulations for a converted dwelling. So under the new bylaw, this would in fact be considered a converted dwelling as opposed to a duplex. Mm -hmm. And it does require a minimum uh, parking space width of 2.4 meters for single semis and converted dwellings. And where does that revised um, zoning bylaw stand in terms of process? Great question. Um, it's currently <laughs> it's currently in, in draft uh, form, and I believe uh, the intent is to bring it back to Planning and Heritage Committee uh, early in the new year, hopefully January, uh, so that planning staff can receive direction to bring it forward for adoption. Okay, so it's not like it's going to happen in the next couple of weeks that would give them the opportunity to uh, go under that bylaw for the zone, for the parking. Unfortunately, uh, still a few months. <laughs> tried. Under under that bylaw, I believe uh, we wouldn't even be here at all. Yeah. So, <laughs> that is correct. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. Yes, go ahead, David. What, what would happen if we were to defer this uh, decision for three months or... Could they go ahead then? Through the chair, I, I might suggest a deferral to the December meeting, which would only be one month that they would have to wait. Uh, that'll give uh, sufficient time uh, to add this extra variance. They've already paid the application fee, the original application fee. Um, yep. So in terms of their timing, I mean, I'd leave it to the applicant, but maybe best to defer to the December meeting. But if we deferred it until the new bylaw come into effect, they wouldn't have to bother with it. They... But I Correct. suspect, Dave, that they want to get up and running and yeah. renting this property out before then. And, but we're, can they, we're not, at, they can't, can't do that. They can't go ahead and do that. Um, we're actually OK to delay for the winter in so far as going forward. So just because it's hard to do the construction in the winter and stuff, so even internally. Through the, the chair, my only uh, caution would be that the zoning, the new zoning bylaw may get approved in a few months, but uh, in the case where there could be an appeal, yeah. I wouldn't want them waiting for an unknown time yeah. frame. Okay. okay. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak to this application? Hearing none, I would entertain a motion. 
Yes, Jerry. Oh. Okay, and reason? You need to turn on your mic, Jerry. I might need some help since I'm the new guy. I was caught without my sheet here. <laughs> okay, Public you probably mic. want to approve this because the minor variance requested is minor in nature. I sure do. That's exactly it. Okay, and is there a second? Okay. Charlene. Charlene. I second. was reading his lips. I thought that's I will what second he it. Second. <laughs> okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Or any opposed, sorry. No, nope, not hearing none, then this is approved. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll see you again, I guess. I'm gonna go back to the first one that we approved and we need a reason for the approval on that. Yeah, I tried to get your attention on that. It was, what did I have? Well, you, you're not, your, uh, your image isn't up, David. That's why I can't see you waving. Oh, is that right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I guess I forgot to click something. I don't know. Ah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, well, there was no public input and it's desirable. Okay. Seconder agree with that? Yeah. Okay. I'll just, uh, anybody opposed? So that is approved for the reasons there. Okay, next application. I believe Mr. Bannon is up. Yes, the next application is B09-20, locations at 1114 Alone Avenue. Purpose of the application is to sever the lands at that address to sever a resident surplus to a farm operation on Alone Avenue. The proposed retained lands would have an approximate frontage of 99 meters, an approximate depth of 111 meters, and an approximate area of 1.1 hectares. A severed lands would have frontage of approximately 206 meters, an approximate area of 8.11 hectares. The retained lands have a single detached dwelling, and the severed lands are currently vacant. Uh, we have not received any public input on the application. And we have nine conditions that we are recommending to be included with any approval. Okay, someone to speak to this application? Go ahead, Chris. I'll yes. Yep. yep, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of committee. Um, so I am Chris Pigeon. I'm with the GSP group. I'm representing uh, Robert and Ruth Robinette, who are the owners of the property. This, um, the, the severed portion of the lands, so outside of their existing dwelling is proposed to be purchased by FGB Factors Limited. And that is a consortium made up of the Fom family and Mark Hunter, the Hunter um, family, um, ultimately anticipating the proposed development of those lands. So we've reviewed the staff report and the recommendation and we sent it to uh, Charles Dumphy, who's their legal counsel. We have uh, two requests for the committee to consider on the nine conditions. So the first is uh, condition number six is um, an easement in favor of Bell. So in, when you look through the report, there's a graphic that illustrates that there's a, a Bell easement that actually surprisingly jogs through uh, the, I guess, behind the residences that front on to the west side of Alone, and then jogs back out to Alone and parallel that uh, to Alone across this property. Mr. Dumphy has asked whether the committee would consider adding two words to condition number six, and it would read, prior to the stamping of the deed, the applicant is to provide an easement and adding two words in gross to Bell Canada. And uh, what that would allow, uh, the, the in gross does allow the uh, opportunity for the Bell uh, lines to be relocated without having to revisit the easement. As my understanding, I'm a planning consultant, I'm not a lawyer, but I have to take Mr. Dumphy at his word. And he would of course negotiate that with Bell Canada in terms of a, an in gross easement versus an easement that is fixed on a three meter wide width. So that's the, that's the first request. The second request is, so the, 
condition number five has indicated that the severed portion of the lands would be required to go through a rezoning to prohibit any building or structure. And, and of course, what we anticipate that that's a single detached dwelling and also to correct the minimum area requirement of the agricultural zone that applies to the severed parcel. So the 8.3 hectares. My question to the committee and, and probably to uh, Mr. Bannon is, could this be done by a minor variance? Could we bring this back uh, as a minor variance to the committee? It's simply, it's much more expeditious uh, to bring it back to the committee rather than to go through a rezoning process, which of course means it has to go to council. Mr. Bannon, Other than that, the rest of the conditions we're fine with. Mr. Bannon, if you can respond to that, please. Yeah, so tip, so you're looking at um, a lot or prohibiting the use of buildings or structures on the property. And you're also looking at um, varying the lot width of those severed lands, correct? Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. okay. we, we can look into it. Um, I, I wouldn't mind getting a legal opinion on it. Um, so maybe we should reword it something to the fact that it's going to be to the satisfaction of the director of engineering services, and we could include a rezoning or minor variance basically to their satisfaction. Um, that way you, you have that option and we can discuss it after the meeting, but we can do either or depending on, uh, what that legal opinion might be. Um, I, I think there's, there's a potential that it could be dealt with through a minor variance. Um, but I'd like to get clarification on that before we agree to that and re remove the request for the rezoning. Okay, Ter terrific. That would be very, uh, um, we appreciate that very much. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak to this application? Okay, questions from committee members. Seeing none, I would entertain a motion. I'll move that this request be approved um, with the um, recommendations or the conditions listed um, and as revised as discussed earlier. Um, public input, no public input was um, received and it allows for the creation of a new lot. Okay, second. Okay, David, second. Any further discussion? Anyone opposed? All in favor, so that is passed. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, committee, appreciate it. Anything further, Mr. Bannon? No, I don't have anything further. Okay, thank you all. Uh, meeting is adjourned. <laughs>